Hi everyone, so today I'm going to do a video talking about some of the products that I kind of regret purchasing, I guess products that were kind of a miss with me rather than being a big hit. And I am a super, just a warning, I am like wired on three cups of coffee because I just had um, a film crew come by for another interview for German TV and I just was drinking coffee and I'm not normally a coffee drinker, I was just drinking a cup of coffee after a cup of coffee. So I'm like a little bit hyper, I have to say. <laughs> But yeah, super exciting. It's just been a whirlwind of press and, you know, interviews and stuff like that and being featured on the news and it's just been a really exciting last few weeks and I am uh, just very happy about everything that has happened and all the, you know, the press I've received lately. So anyway, without further ado, let's jump into the video. I want to know from you guys, what is the product that you regret purchasing? You can put that in the comments below and I'd love to read your responses. So I'm going to start off with foundations. Now the first foundation that I really just don't use and that I just regret buying is one by Makeup Forever and it's the Matte Velvet Plus. It just looked really cakey on my skin. It didn't apply smoothly. Like it really accentuated, um, like if I had any dry areas or if I had, you know, just something on my face. It just really accentuated that. And I just did not like the finish. I think matte finish, like completely matte finish, it just doesn't flatter me. The next foundation that I also didn't like is the Revlon Photo Ready. And initially when I got this, I think I actually did a video review of it um, and did a demo of it. And initially I thought it was okay. And then recently I put this on again and I was like, oh my God, this looks really horrible because there's little glitter in here, like little um, reflecting particles and when you put that all over your face, it just looks, especially close up, it looks really unnatural. You know, I really like, for example, the NARS Sheer Glow because it does have like a dewy glowing finish, but this one actually has like sparkle in it. So you kind of end up looking like a twilight vampire. Um, this is the MAC Iridescent Loose Powder and this is in the shade Silver Dusk. And I, this was like, this is probably like the first highlighter that I ever purchased. And I didn't really know a lot about highlighters back then. So I um, bought this because the lady at MAC, like the salesperson, she recommended this. You know, it looks nice on here. Like it looks like a nice kind of shimmery reflective powder. But the thing is that again, there's like glitter in it, or I don't know if it's glitter, but there's these little, you know, silver particles that are just very obvious if you have it on your cheek. But if you put it on your face, this kind of glitter just kind of flies everywhere. And as you wear it during the day, um, the glitter like kind of moves and it just looks chunky and yeah, I don't know. It's just not a smooth consistency. It looks really obvious. Another product that I don't like by MAC is the Paint Pot in Rubenesque. If you look at it like this, it looks nice. It's this kind of peachy, coral, you know, golden shade, but there's just really poor pigmentation. So it's not, you know, very pigmented and it applies quite splotchy. Um, like it doesn't apply evenly on my eyes. I have no idea why I bought this color. Um, I know that some of the other paint pots like are probably better than this one. Okay, so the next product is one that I purchased recently in a haul and it's the Burt's Bees um, Shea Butter Hand Repair Cream and it's the one with cocoa butter and sesame oil. And I thought that this would be like a really good hand cream, like very moisturizing with those oils and stuff in it. And it might be, but the thing is it smells so bad. It smells absolutely disgusting. Like it smells like um, something you would find in a hospital, like something medicinal or I don't know, like the doctor's gonna put it on your, some kind of wound or something. It's, it's really a horrible smell. It doesn't smell feminine at all. If I have it on my hands, it, the scent lingers. So the thing is that I can smell it on my hands. Like if I, you know, if I'm resting my my face on my hand, it'll I will smell the scent of this so strongly that I actually have to go and wash my hands to get rid of this stuff. And also this was kind of a more like expensive hand cream. You know, usually I buy like really cheap hand creams. And this was kind of like, I don't know, in the US this was like $10, but in Canada it's even more. Models own lip 
what is this called? Lip and Cheek Tint. Um, this is a UK drugstore, like pharmacy brand. And I bought this because this was like a cheap version of the Benefit um, Benetint. This has such a strong scent. It, scent. it smells like roses. It smells so strong that if you use it on your lips, for example, because you're, you can use the Benetint like on your lips. So if you use this one by Models Own, it feels like, you know when you spray perfume and you accidentally get it in your mouth and it has that really like soapy kind of taste? That's exactly what it tastes like. So already I can't use this on my lips because that flavor like goes in your mouth and it just it just tastes like you're sucking on soap or something. The other thing is that it actually broke. So I was like screwing it closed one time and I guess this is like a really cheap plastic or something because it broke and now it's permanently open. So now I'm actually, I just kept it for this video. I'm, I'm gonna end up throwing this in the garbage. Another product that it didn't work for me is the Carmex Classic. Um, this is the lip balm that comes in the uh, this pot. At first I tried it, I really did like it, but then I think something in it, I had an allergic reaction because there's quite a lot of menthol in it, that kind of tingly feeling. And what happened is it kind of irritated the skin around my lips, like on the outer part of my lips. It got really red, super um, cracked, and it started flaking, and it even started like bleeding in some areas, and I think it was because of this lip balm. So at first I was thinking, oh my god, my lips are so dry, so I kept slathering on more and more, and then I realized that this is probably the culprit. So I was like, oh great, this is really not what I want at all. Okay, another product that I was really disappointed with is this eyeshadow by Kiko and I showed this in a haul that I bought in Berlin. It's the color sphere in number 08. These baked eyeshadows just look so pretty and they're really not like very expensive. So I picked up two of them. I bought a gray one and I bought this turquoise one and the gray one is nice. Like the gray one I can work with. This one is like something is weird about this because it looks nice like this and when you swatch it it's like oh that's a really pretty like aqua turquoise color. But when you apply it on your eyes, it just falls off. Like it doesn't stick to your eye at all. And I've tried this with a bunch of different eyeshadow bases. I've tried this with like a stickier kind of product underneath. And you know, at first it sticks, but then like an hour, hour later, all the makeup is gone. And I'm like, where did it go? It just dis disappeared from my eye. L'Oreal Touche Magique. And this is an illuminating concealer. And I guess this is supposed to be like a drugstore copy of the Yves Saint Laurent Touche Eclat, but the thing is that this is really not a good copy of those kind of luminizing, you know, those like luminizing concealers that are supposed to reflect light. It just is very yellow. Um, the brush is really cheaply made, like it's a really kind of cheap packaging, and then when you put it on your under eye, it to me completely accentuated fine lines and it just looked really chalky. It didn't look smooth and luminizing. There isn't really anything luminizing in it at all. It has kind of like a matte finish when it dries down. It's the NARS Diablo Lip Lacquer and in itself it is a nice color. Um, it's this really kind of deep cherry red kind of um, a little bit of a vampy cherry red color. And this is like a lip lacquer that you paint on your lips and it does look really glossy and you know, when you apply it with a lip brush, um, it does last a really long amount of time on my lips before I have to reapply it. But the thing is, it's so high maintenance because if you would decide to wear this out for an evening, you have to take like a portable lip brush with you because you can't just like dip your finger in it and smear it on like that because it just won't look nice. Like I'm just not a high maintenance lip person who's going to be running to the bathroom and like touching up their lips with a lip brush. And the other thing is that the scent of this, like the taste is so plasticky. There's no vanilla flavor in it or something. There's nothing fruity in it. They're just really gross tasting. And this was such a, an expensive splurge for me because I had to order this online and then I had to pay duties on top of that. I end up just not reaching for it that much. Um, you know, it's not, an, it's not an ugly looking product once it's on, like it looks nice, but just there's kind of drawbacks with it that make me kind of regret spending all that money on a product that I end up not reaching for. And the last thing that I wanted to mention um, in this video is the Tweezerman tweezers, and this was like a special edition. Now I love Tweezerman tweezers, and I have a second one. Um, this is the one that I originally purchased. It's just an original one, the purple, like just a purple color one. 
And then I wanted to get a second pair because, you know, I just wanted to have like two tweezers that I could use. So I got the pink, like the breast cancer awareness one. And that's all fine, but these tweezers are just not as good as the regular ones. Like, I don't know what it is um, because it's like the same company, Tweezerman, but these just don't grab the hair. So even though these are like newer, these are like ancient, this just doesn't work. The upsetting thing is that um, these were these are kind of expensive tweezers. This isn't like a five dollar tweezer. I think they're like eighteen or twenty or above twenty two Canadian dollars when I bought it in Canada. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to check me out on Facebook and Twitter if you want more updates and pictures and interaction with me. That's always a really good way to stay in touch. And I will see you guys very soon. Bye, everyone.